Hey guys, for today's video, we're doing one of my favorites to film of the entire year. I say that a lot. <laughs> I said that about a lot of videos, but this one is truly one of my favorites because this is the best of the best of beauty, makeup, hair, skincare, everything of the year, top shelf products, 2019, baby. You heard it here. I always go a little crazy when I film this video because I just wanna share everything that I loved with you guys. And I'm like, okay, what about that one lipstick I used back in February that I used for like two weeks straight? No. I'm not doing that this time. These are things that I've used consistently, things that I've repurchased within the year. They stay on top of my vanity. They go with me in my purse. I take them with me when I travel. My regular bitches, my hoes. Let's get into it, because it's a lot. So first, I wanna start with hair products. I have them here, hold please. I'm not like a big hair person. I like my hair to look nice, but I don't spend too much time on it. I definitely spend more time on my makeup than I do my hair. So the first thing that I have here is from Kendra. This is the thickening spray. This is the number five. I know they go by numbers. I don't know exactly what they mean, but it looks like this. And this makes your hair so thick. If you have really fine hair or you suffer from having volume, like you like to do curls the way that I curl my hair is with a wand. And then I like it to be really peasy. I like it to be really big. I like more relaxed on the top. And then just real full on the bottom this will do it for you i swear to god i actually got this by mistake i meant to order the dry thickening spray the one that you use um, afterwards to style your hair this you use in your hair when it's wet and it is so good i will never use another thickening spray to blow dry into my hair unless they come out with something better than this you know how sometimes when you curl your hair on like clean hair or first day hair it doesn't really curl or it falls a lot or it just doesn't look its best as it does on second or third day hair you don't have that issue with this so i have other ones i'm trying to finish off but when i am rushing or i have an event and i didn't have time to wash my hair the day before and do the second day curl look on the day of my event I'll wash my hair the day of and throw this in my hair and oh my god it just works it works it works it's no fuss it's the best please trust me when I say that if you want your hair to be thick and full and you want it to hold a curl this is gonna do it for you honey so I picked this waver up over the summer I believe I got it on Amazon but they sell it at Target and Walmart and stores like that and this is the bedhead wave artist this is the waver and this is like pretty much how I did my hair the whole summer I really love this thing it gives that really um, messy this is the lock I keep hitting the on and off button to lock it because I'm a dip Thank you very much. This gives you that really pretty messy, like effortless, I was at the beach all day, I have nothing in my hair but salt water type of hair. It's really nice, I like it a lot, super affordable. They always have this on sale on Amazon. I'm pretty sure I got it when it was on sale for like 20 bucks and normally it's around 30. And it really does the trick, I, I love it, I love it. It's so easy, I never did the root of my hair, I kinda just pulled it from here down and waved it down and left the bottom out. I would just grab a thick chunk, that sounds so so nasty but I would grab just a big thick piece of hair and just bloop 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 and it was that fast and it looks cute it looks messy but like not too messy kind of like Carrie Bradshaw hair especially over the summer I'm always feeling those beach vibes in the summertime so I know I'm gonna be using this again this summer and I used the crap out of it last summer also this from uh, InStyler this is the InStyler Freestyle Max and I like the original version of this I have hair all in it because I got a lot of hair and I shed like a freaking dog I actually worked with them on a video to show you guys this one and this is one that opens up in the middle I have it wrapped around so you can't really see it so it opens up like this it can be a flat iron um, I use it as a curling iron I use it if I want to do kind of like a blow out type look and I really love this this is my hair tool if I don't have time to curl I don't have time to wave I don't wear my hair straight I don't like it straight so you'll never see me with my hair straight um, but I want some type of body to my hair this is what I use again super fast it takes me like I'm um, like less than probably like five or six minutes to use this tool you can do the same type of deal where you just grab a section and just kind of run it through let it sit for a second and you have big voluminous hair I've worn my hair using this tool in so many videos and people ask me what did you use in your hair what did you do to it it if it looks like I have some type of blowout or I have a lot of volume but it looks like I was just at the salon it's always this and I love this thing and I will continue to use this in 2020 okay 
that is it for hair. Let's move on to makeup. And before we move on to that, I'm going to start with tools because I discovered a lot of staple tools that I've used the whole entire year. And the first one is this sponge from Shop Miss A. This is the, I want to say it's the Papa, P-A-W-P-A-W is how you spell it, um, sponge. I don't know what it's called. I'll make sure to link everything below. But this has replaced every single sponge. I don't use the Beauty Blender anymore. I haven't used my L'Oreal one. I have them right in front of me. I'm trying to see. I haven't used a Real Technique one. I haven't used used um, just any of my other staple sponges because this is the best. It's like a dollar fifty. Why are people spending twenty dollars on sponges when you can buy this sponge for a dollar? And I've had it for months. I do clean it every time I use it, but I've had it for months and it hasn't lost its shape. It hasn't gotten gross or gunky or it doesn't have any holes in it or anything like that. And it's just so good. I urge you to stop buying expensive sponges and to go on Shop Miss A and buy 20 of these and you'll be set for life. I have a couple of brushes and the first one I want to talk about is this one from Lexi. This is the Duo Fiber Powder Brush. And this is what I use when I apply something like more of like a creamier gel type of texture or if I want to add like a blush topper. But in particular, I really like to use this for the ColourPop blushes because they're a little bit of like a jelly consistency, almost like a cream, but not quite a cream. And it applies the most perfect amount. I also like this if I'm taking something like, I'll go ahead and show you guys this. Um, I wasn't gonna talk about it yet, but I'll go ahead and talk about it now since I wanna show you how I use it. This is the NARS Loose Orgasm, and while we're here, I'll show you guys the Hourglass Brilliant Nude Blush. So this is a big combination for me. We're getting a little off topic of the brush, but it'll come back together in just a second. So since I'm on this, um, this was definitely one of my favorites of 2019. I have it on right now. I can't put it down. It looks so beautiful. It looks like your skin. It's like a glow from within. And then I used it with the NARS Loose Orgasm. I don't know if this is like a blush. An, it just says it's an illuminator, but I love this combination together. And this is so gorgeous. Now I didn't use this every single time I use the Hourglass blush, but if I did want to just amp it up, I wanted to look super glowy, extra fresh, I would always use this on top of that. I really like that combination together. That was a big one I used in the spring. Back to the brush, anytime I use some type of loose blush, loose topper, something like that to go on top of my blush, I would always use this. So I would go just like this, top it off, and again, it was just applies the perfect amount. It's never too much. It's never too rosy or just too heavy product. Love the way that I figured out how to use it. Perfection. Okay, let's go back to brushes, because I have a couple more brushes. This brush from e.l.f., this is the Flawless Face Brush, and this is my new bronzer brush. I don't know if you guys remember, I was obsessed with the uh, BH Cosmetics vegan brushes. I still love them, they're still some of my favorites, but I replaced my BH Cosmetics brushes with this one, the bronzer one, and this is one of the best bronzer brushes I've ever used. It's so soft. I got it in a set. If they have it individually, I'll link it individually, but I know personally I bought it in a set, but it's just perfection. It's perfection, and I'm looking at my bronzer brushes now. Like I'll show you guys some of my favorites. I really don't have one that's this kind of oval shape, so I, I like really big brushes like this as you can see, but I don't really have anything that's just this kind of fanned out shape, like a little bit more wide. And it does a really nice job at applying bronzer. It's really, really soft. I love it. Definitely uh, my favorite of 2019 for bronzer. And then I always take everything and if things are looking a little harsh or I need to kind of blend in a contour or blush, I always take it and just kind of blend everything together and this was definitely my favorite for bronzer. Now for contour, I love this one from Lexi. This is the Lexi 512 Small Contouring Brush and I used to be obsessed with my Real Techniques brush. I still love it. They're still like kind of the same thing. Um, it's just that Real Techniques is more round and then this one's a little more square. I never thought I would like a square brush but this kind of took over for my Real Techniques brush. It gets in there, chisels out those little cheekies, shaves off a couple of LBs on the face because we all need that. Or at least I need that until I lose some weight. Luxie brushes are really nice. Like they're beautiful. I get a lot of them in BoxyCharms because um, 
They feature a lot of them in their boxes, but I really love this one. I used the shit out of it this year. And then this one from Morphe, which is the, I wanna say it's the R38 or R40, but it's the rose gold brush. This is such a good brush. And you guys know how I feel about Morphe brushes. I'm not a massive fan, especially of their blending brushes, but this one's really good and I use it all the time. This um, I'll use as just a crease brush. I'll use it either in place of my E40 from Sigma or I'll use it with my Sigma E40 and I'll kind of go underneath. It just does a really good job of applying shadow, of blending, and it's again like a one and done type of deal. Quick, easy, and you're done, and it's affordable. It's like seven or eight bucks, you can't beat the price. Okay, let's move on to makeup. So I'll start with primer, one of my favorites this year. I'm sure you guys all know, especially towards the end of the year where my skin is super dry and super gross right now, and I don't know what to do. I need like all the hydration in the world. Uh, the No Pore Blum Prime Essence from Touch and Soul. I love this primer, I'm almost out of it. I can't believe I'm almost out of it, it's so good. It makes your skin look so glowy. Not super glowy where it makes your skin look wet, but it's like a lit from within glow, that type of glow, and it just hydrates. It makes your skin look healthy, it makes it look good. It just makes you look your best, like your skin is just radiating from within, but it doesn't make your makeup greasy. I've had, I actually have this on today, I've had it on all day, and I'm not greasy. I'm getting a little greasy in my T-zone, that's just because I'm oily. I also took a two hour nap today, so my makeup's a little smudged. <laughs> but um, I don't use it in my T-zone because it will make my makeup kind of slip and slide in that area. But on this part of my face where I don't really need my skin to be matte, I want it to be healthy looking. It's like one of those skincare type of products and I really love it. Also along with that, I wanna mention the Maybelline Dewy and Smooth Foundation. Now I discovered this like at the end of last year. I don't think I mentioned it in my video because I had just discovered it, but this is my new mixing foundation instead of the Physicians Formula Healthy Foundation and it is beautiful, it's perfection. I hate the matte version of this, but I love this one. It glides on like a dream. When my skin is really, really, really dry, sometimes I'll just use this by itself and it looks beautiful. It it doesn't stay on my skin all day, like I'm too oily for that, but sometimes I just wanna have like a really glowy, dewy look and it's perfect. It's so cheap. It's like five bucks at Walmart. It does a really great job of adding just a little bit of glide if you need a little glide to a really matte foundation. It's just, it's the best. I love it. It's so good. Also, the L'Oreal Fresh Wear Foundation. I forgot to pull this. Um, this is what I consistently used probably the entire year. I would try other foundations here and there, but I did a review on it back, I want to say in the beginning of the year, like maybe February-ish, and I never stopped using it. I have multiple colors. I also like to mix this with this, and it just looks bomb on the skin. I love it. I mix this with other foundations, like right now I'm using the uh, YSL. I wanted to try this one out, and I mix both of these foundations with this. It just kind of depends, am I a little more tan? Am I not? Am I feeling extra dry that day? Am I a little more oily? These two especially though were really good to me this year and they're both drugstore, they're both affordable. I recommend this foundation to every single person I've ever met in my entire life because it works on dry skin, it works on normal skin, it works on oily skin, it just depends on what you pair it with, but it is stunning, it's stunning. This is my new Holy Grail foundation. I always used to say I don't have a Holy Grail foundation. I'm always looking for the next best. I still like trying new foundations, but this and L'Oreal Pro Matte. But I still like this more than L'Oreal Pro Matte, surprisingly, and L'Oreal Pro Matte is the shit. My new favorite. I love it with my whole heart. Let's talk about a couple of bronzers. Now, I don't have my Catrice Sun Lover bronzer. That was like my favorite bronzer um, when I discovered it, so I, Took that from my sister when she first moved here with me. Actually forced her to give it to me and then she stole it back and I don't know where it is. I think she's hiding it from me. So I don't have it right now. I'll insert a picture so you guys can see it. If you wanna look like you have the most beautiful sun-kissed California beach type skin, you must try that bronzer. They only have one shade. It's not gonna work for every skin type. For me, maybe a little bit darker than me and lighter than me, um, it'll probably work for you. For darker skin types, it's not gonna work for them because they only just have that one shade, which sucks. It would be great if they had other shades in that formula that could work for all skin types because it is so beautiful. It's, again, one of those products that just looks 
like skin. It looks like your skin. It's so glowy. It's so radiant. It's so healthy. I love it. I think I always mention that, that I love that bronzer so much. It is just like one of the most beautiful bronzers I've ever used, but I hate that not everybody can use it because they only have one shade. Unless they came out with more, correct me if I'm wrong, but every time I look for it at Ulta, they only have the one. But yeah, I, I have to mention that because it was definitely my go-to. And then this one from Maybelline, the City Bronzer. I have this one on today. So I actually forgot about this one because I don't know why. I got into the Catrice one. This is in the shade 200, and this is like one of the most beautiful and natural bronzers I've ever used. It doesn't have a lot of shimmer to it. It kind of reminds me of the Butter Bronzer. It's very satiny, very kind of creamy. I actually almost hit pan on this. I did use this a lot this year, but it's definitely, definitely a lot more warmer in tone than what I normally use. I don't really use super like warm tone bronzers. I like a little bit more neutral. It's like a warm undertone, but it doesn't have a lot of orange in it, so it looks good. Oh God, I love this bronzer. I used it for the first time in a long time and I was like, why did I stop using this? I just totally forgot about it, but I love it. It's affordable, it's from Maybelline, really beautiful, and it looks fantastic on the skin. And then this one from Fenty, this is the Sun Stalker Bronzer in Island Ting, and I actually use this to contour my skin. This is a little bit on like the neutral warmish side. I don't really contour with um, like this type of shade. I like to go a little more ashy, but I just picked it up because I wanted to try it when it was new, and this is it right here. I do like it to contour. I use it fairly regularly, but I go in very, very lightly because it's pigmented, but it is a really nice bronzer. The packaging is super chic. I'm not a massive packaging whore. I don't go crazy over packaging, but I can really appreciate beautiful packaging, and this is beautiful packaging. It does get dirty, but I don't really care about that. If I'm tan and I want to bronze with something matte, which isn't that often, I like to usually go for something a little more shimmery or with a little bit of gleam to it but when i do want to go for matte on that rare occasion i reach for this and it's just so beautiful the formula is so buttery and it looks really beautiful on the skin i have one more contouring highlight situation the cover fx perfector face palette so this is actually the contour that i use on a regular basis this one right here see how it's a little bit more on the ashy sh ashy shy <laughs> see how it's a little bit more on the ashy side a little more cool tone this is like my every day contour and I love it. It is the most perfect color for my skin tone and I don't use these two. I don't actually I've never used this one because that is I'm sorry it's the ugliest bright pink blush I've ever seen in my life. I love you cover effects. I, I don't know why you put this blush in here like it's like a fucking flamingo pink and I don't use this because I don't really know how to use it. It doesn't work for me but the highlighters are gorgeous and I just mix all three together so this is a really nice travel palette and do a better swatch those swatches sucked this is a nice travel palette because you have a um, highlight and you have a contour if you're not a picky bitch you can use the blush but when I went to El Paso recently for my Gigi's funeral I just took this with me and I didn't have to take any other bronzer or contour or highlight I just took this and I took a blush and I just used this as a bronzer and contour and it has a big ass mirror that's really cool too this highlighter from artist couture is the summer haze diamond glow powder this is such a unique powder highlighter it's a loose highlighter oh god I like died for this I'm actually probably went about halfway through it in the short time that I had it because I think I got it over the summer and I just died for it I'm telling you it is so freaking beautiful. It's beautiful for summer because it's real peachy, golden-ish, but it's so wearable. It has little flecks of glitter in it too. And when I was really going for that summertime beaming glow where I was like, I wanna be dripping, dripping in glow and highlight. Like I think this is all I use the whole summer. It's good. It's really, really beautiful. I forgot about it until I was going through my stuff and I was like, so pretty. But right now I'm into kind of icy since it's still winter-ish. I'll pull that back out in the spring and summertime. What I'm using right now is this from Juvia's Place and this is actually what I have on today and this is more of like an icy highlight. I talked about this several times in my last couple of videos but you can see it's like a white gold, very shiny, very glowing to the highest of heavens and I love it right now. I normally go for a uh, like golden-y type, like Amrezy here. Everybody knows Amrezy. I normally go for Amrezy ABH, golden, that type of highlight. That's what I normally like. Ofra Rodeo Drive, something very shiny, but more on the golden side. It complements my skin a little bit better, but 
I don't know what it is. It's the winter time, the holiday season. Maybe I just really like a more icy, silvery tone. Also because I'm really pale this time of year. So that's probably why. And this was my go-to for like the whole end of the year. Probably like September or October on. I didn't really pick up another highlighter, or, or at least if I did, it was very seldom because I was just really into that one. If I wasn't going for icy or golden and I wanted to do something a little more feminine, a little more on the pinkish side, I went for this one from Morphe, and this is in the shade Spark. This was actually a recommendation from a subscriber, and I know I just always am like, God, I'm just not a big fan of Morphe. Hold on, you guys, Charlie's scratching on the door. I have to let him in. My baby needs me. I'll be right back. I try a lot of Morphe products and I kind of stop trying them because they just always disappoint me or they're just kind of like, mm, I'm not I'm not excited for them like other people are and we're all entitled to our opinions. That's my opinion. Other people are diehard Morphe fans and that's fine too. I still try them. I still spend my money on them. They're just not my favorites. So I remember I mentioned that in a video and a subscriber had commented and said, you have to try this highlighter Spark from Morphe. It will blow your mind away. And I was like, oh another Morphe product. Okay, whatever. I'll pick up the mini. I'll try that one. It quickly became one of my favorite highlighters. So you guys know how I feel about the color pink. I absolutely loathe and despise it with my whole heart and soul. But this pink is so different. It's not like pink pink. It's so wearable. It's so pretty. It makes your skin look so feminine and so just like youthful. In the springtime, I used the hell out of this because I did a lot of looks like this. This was always my highlighter that I used and I have to say this is like my top. It's in my top of my favorites. I fell so hard in love with this and I didn't think I would and I cannot remember the subscriber who recommended it to me but thank you so much because this has become one of my favorites. So I know I already talked about two blushes. Another blush that I do want to mention is this one from Jouer. And this was another one where I just used the crap out of it. Probably with Morphe Spark because it kind of has that pinky-ish, like soft feminine vibe. This is the blush duo in Adore. I really, really like this. Now these are matte and I'm not a big matte blush fan, but they have like a little bit of, it's not a shimmer, it's a little bit of a sheen. Um, so I just mixed these two together. They're very pretty, just pretty soft looking, very like youthful, again, that type of like girly-ish vibe where I just wanna be very soft and pretty. I don't want anything too shimmery. I'm sick of going in with like my nude tones or my beige tones, like uh, Burt's Bees Toasted Cinnamon. When I wanna go for something just a little more softer, more on the feminine side, I love this and I use this a lot. I dug my stupid fat finger in it and made a little hole and I was so mad. I actually did it twice. See, there's a hole here and a hole, wait, backwards, a hole here. But um, I just really enjoyed this a lot. And this is one where I'll pull out uh, more towards the spring and summer months because it, I just, I don't know, just, I feel like it goes with that time of year. I did enjoy that so, so much. That was my first Jouer product. And I don't know what took me so long to try Jouer, but I'm glad I tried the blushes because the blushes are beautiful. And I used it so much, I feel like I just like was never hitting pan. It, like it wasn't making a dent at all. You get your money's worth from it for sure. And then um, I think that's really it for face products. So let's move on to eyes. I'm only gonna talk about two things and I have them both on my eyes today. And the first one is the Dose of Colors Frankation Palette. What took me so long to buy this palette? Now, I did go through all my palettes to kind of look and see were there other ones that I used a lot. I know I fell in love with a lot more towards the end of the year, but consistently, besides maybe Soft Glam because that's one of my go-to palettes, this was probably my go-to of 2019. It has every transition I would need. It has a light brown, a medium brown, a dark brown. It has some pinks in it that you can play with. Uh, this is what I have in my crease today. Every time I needed something where I didn't know what to do or I was like, what do I, what look am I gonna go for today? Do I wanna do something fun? Do I wanna do something different? Do I wanna do something quick? I just always found myself reaching for this. I would even use the transitions in this and then maybe grab a glitter, grab a single shadow. It's just so pretty. And then you have these fun colors down here. Um, I used a lot of these for my more dramatic nights out. And then this uh, cranberry color is so intense. I mean, it's just so 
beautiful. Like the formula is so good. I love this. This is like just a really pretty soft glittery type of pink. And this is just my favorite this year. I didn't really use a ton of other palettes unless I was testing something new or unless I just wanted to try something I hadn't tried in a while. That was definitely my go-to. My shadow that I have on my lid is this from Artist Couture. This is the Diamond Lights Finisher in Spotlight Glitz. And I know I mentioned this in a favorites because I think like maybe the whole month of like August, I only used this on my lid and it's so pretty. Again, one of those things where it was just kind of like very feminine, very girly. I just want to look like a pretty princess. <laughs> Not really, but you know what I'm saying? Where you're like, you want to go like soft, you want to do pinks and mauves. This was it for me. It's this one right here. It's so intense and it's so beautiful. These are so different. They remind me kind of of like amped up ColourPop Super Shock glitters, I think. Um, it's just in a more loose formula with maybe a little bit more glitter in it. Oh, I love this. There's a golden one I wanna try. I hope they come out with more colors because these are so special. They're so different and it's so easy to just take and tap on your lid. I just take my finger and tap, tap, and that's it, I'm done. When I discovered these, they were like, okay, that's it. That's all I'm using for the rest of my life. <laughs> I wanna share a mascara, and you guys know I don't ride on the expensive mascara bandwagon, but I have to talk about this because I have to be honest, because this is really, really good. It's amazing. So it's the It Cosmetics Superhero Mascara. I got this in a boxy charm. I didn't pay for it. I paid for the box. Um, I didn't buy this individually, but this is like almost dead. I had this mascara for a long time. I think I got it in like October and I use it every single day, but I use this mascara a lot on my natural days where I wasn't doing false lashes. And I actually have a video, which I will put up here for you guys to check out where it was like a one eyeshadow mascara, uh, Eat like fast and easy tutorial and this makes your lashes look so bomb. I have no lashes. My natural lashes are like little pathetic wispies. They're nothing. They're, they're not even wispies. That would, that's not even doing my lashes justice because they don't even look pretty like wispy lashes. They're just little like, hmm, they're sad. They're pathetic. I have to use 80 million coats of mascara to make my lashes, my natural lashes look anything special and this is amazing. Oh my God, it is so, 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 so good. I will say I've tried a lot of high-end mascaras. I don't like spending the money on them, but I have tried a lot. This is by far my favorite. If you want volume, you want length, you want thickness, and you don't wanna go in with two or three different mascaras, when I do natural lashes, I would go in with like two, sometimes three mascaras to get the false lash look without wearing lashes. Pick this up. I promise you won't regret it and you will love it. This is probably not even good anymore, but I don't want to let it go because it is incredible and the wand is nice and skinny. I don't mind a skinny wand. I know a lot of people like thicker wands, but because I don't have a lot of lash, sometimes thick uh, wands, they kind of get all over my eye and my lid and everything, so I can appreciate that the wand's a little skinnier and I love this. It is flippin' incredible. Let's talk about brows. I know you guys already know what I'm gonna say. The CoverGirl Micro Fine and Define Brow Pencil in Soft Brown, and then the e.l.f. Wow Brow Gel. This was my combination ever since I discovered these two. So I used to be diehard Anastasia Dip Brow. I'm not into the Dip Brow look anymore. I think I consistently used that for like five years, and I was like, Dip Brow or Die, Dip Brow over everything. I'm just not a pomade girl anymore. I am a pencil brow girl now. And this brow pencil is incredible. It's just as good as Anastasia. It's just as good as Benefit, but at a fraction of the price. This is like a six or seven dollar brow pencil. You can buy three of these for the price of an Anastasia Brow Wiz or a Benefit brow pencil. And yes, those are good too. I still use the brow definer. I still have it. I still use the Brow Wiz. I still have them in my collection. Once I run out of those, I'm not gonna repurchase them because this is so good. The formula is amazing. It's stiff, but not too stiff. It's waxy, but not too waxy. I have like empty, like this is empty. Like this is empty. I have empties down there. I've literally gone through so many of these. I feel like if anything in our routine, brows are so trendy right now and they've been trendy for the last couple of years that I feel like people are just 
all about the brows at the moment and I don't see them going away anytime soon. Who wants to go through a 20 to 30 something brow product every couple of weeks? Nobody. Please, 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 please try this. You will not regret it. I got my sister on this. My sister-in-law is actually the one who recommended it to me and I love it so much. I'm so happy she told me about it. I've just told so many people about this and they all love it. I've never heard a single complaint. It's the best, it's the best, it's the best, it's the best. A Along with that, the e.l.f. Wow Brow Gel. I was obsessed with the Essence one for the longest time. I still love the Essence one. My complaint that I have with that is that too much product comes out, and with this one, it's just enough. So I just go in and fill in any sparse areas. I've gotten really good at doing my brows like in a rush. It used to take me forever because I was such a perfectionist, but I've gotten to the point where I can just kind of outline fill in the sparse areas and then if I've missed anything I just go in with this like the front of my brows I never fill them in with a pencil because I don't want them to look too heavy I'll literally like outline the bottom and then I probably start from here back and do this and then I fill in the front with this brow gel so it doesn't look too um, like drawn in or too fake and then I think this was I want to say this is medium. The sticker came off. I'll make sure to leave it below. I got this in an e.l.f. video that I filmed on Valentine's Day and I use it every single time I do my makeup and I, I, I'm barely running out right now. It's like six bucks. So I just have lip products and then I have lashes and then we'll be done. So for my most used lip products this year, I would definitely say it's the combination that I have on today. It is the Milani satin matte um, all the colors that I've tried I love but this one was my favorite lavish so I have this on as a base and I've talked about it so many times in so many videos I felt like it was getting to the point where people were like shut the hell up about the Milani satin lipsticks and shut the hell up about the uh, wet and wild liquid cat suit glosses so this is the combination I have on right now Milani lavish and then the wet and wild this is Sen Nudes and Caught You Bare Naked and I'm almost out of all of these because I use them so much. And in my videos, I just wore the shit out of them. It was what I had on for the longest time in every video. I use these three together. I mean, look at that color scheme. You can't beat it. I love the formula. I just, I love them. They're so good, affordable. I can't say enough good things and you can find them at the drugstore. I love the red. This is my favorite red because it's so comfortable. I just love everything about these. I have another one of the Milan. I have two other Milani colors. I can't recall what they are, but this one is definitely my favorite and I love this combination together. I know I talk a lot about the NYX suede matte lip liners. I did mention them in my last video, I remember, and I talk about them all the time. So I'm not going to talk about them in this video, but what I did discover this year were the ColourPop lippy pencils, specifically BFF3. It's a dark brown lip liner. I know. This was one where it's just one of my favorites this year and I use it, I mean, I, I, you can tell it's used, right? I use it a lot, really nice formula. It's more of a matte formula, it doesn't move, it's not slippery, I hate slippery lip liners, it lasts forever, it's affordable, you can pick it up now at Ulta. Also, my replacement for NYX uh, Ultra Butter Gloss in Cookie Butter, the love of my life that they discontinued, I don't know why they discontinued that color because it was the best. This I got off of Shop Miss A. It's called She Makeup Glossy Lips. I believe this is nudes number four. And this is one where I keep in my purse and I just throw it on if I just need an easy, simple gloss or if I need something to go on top of a liquid lip or I just want to add something shiny. This is my favorite because it has a little bit of brown or like beigey in it, and I, I really like beigey brown type of nudes. Those are my favorites. I forgot to mention it's only a dollar. So yeah, you can't beat the price shop Miss A again. I just have two pairs of lashes I wanna talk about. The first one is from House of Lashes. I would say that I really, these were probably my two go-to lashes. So House of Lashes Iconics, these are actually retired. I spilled some kind of oil on them. I don't know what it is, but they started to fall apart, but they, they needed to go. They were so old. I use them so much and they lasted a really long time. They're like 12 bucks. You can get them at Ulta. I had them for the whole year because I, I know I bought them back in the beginning of the year 
or maybe even at the end of last year and I use them so 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 much it's crazy how much I use these and every time I put them on I was like this is gonna be the last time this is gonna be the last time it's gonna be the last time and it never was these are beautiful so if I wanted something a little more thick a little more dramatic a little bit more spiky I went for the iconics and then if I wanted something a little more separated a little more feminine a little more where you could kind of see the makeup I went for excuse me uh, Venus which you guys know these are my favorite lashes of all time so these were definitely my go-to's I did use others uh, for sure today I have on wispies actually wispies these are the double double up wispies from Ardell I would say I probably went back and forth from these three the most I did try a lot of lashes and I wore a lot of other lashes but just my go-to's I would say were these for like a nice light day if I was going dramatic I did either one of these two just depending on the style since they're two different styles and I think that's it I'm so sorry if I had lipstick in my teeth this whole time. I just realized I forgot to check. Anyways, these are things that I really found myself just talking about over and over and over and over. So if I sound like a broken record, it's because these are things that I really just fell in love with this year that I want to share with you guys that are just so good that I, you know, I only share things with you guys that I'm crazy about and that I love and I want other people to love them too because I want everybody to have beautiful makeup and I love talking about this stuff so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching I'm gonna be doing a an updated favorites soon I know it seems like I just talked about a bunch of favorites but I discovered a lot of new makeup towards the end of the year that I didn't mention in this video because I didn't think it was fair that I did only used it for like maybe a month or two so I didn't want to include it in the best of beauty since you know I wasn't using it for that long but I did discover a lot of new things that I'm crazy about that I want to share with you guys that, that will be coming soon and I hope this video isn't seven years long <laughs> thank you guys so much for watching if you have not yet subscribed then go ahead and subscribe before you go hit the notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos and I'll see you in my next one bye